everybody, Lori here from Unique in the Creek. And today I'm gonna to put together our kit 139. And it is on the ring board. And I put this kit together with a bit of like a farmhouse inspiration. So we have this great welcome sign. It's on uh, almost like on uh, uh, vintage wood or what's that called? Um, shiplap or something like that. But anyways, it's a really, really nice, um, simple welcome sign. Okay. And it inspired me to think more farmhouse and I haven't done a lot of farmhouse kits. So I decided we're going to use um, a poly jute, a natural poly jute, but we're going to pair it up with some burgundies. Let's do some burgundies with it. I find natural and burgundy automatically inspires me for um, farmhouse. So in this kit, you do get a, a roll of this two and a half inch diagonal stripe. Um, it's black, neutral, or natural and white diagonal stripe. That's two and a half. You also get this uh, burlap with red, uh, burgundy red edging. Uh, it's a one and a half inch. Then oh, this stuff is awesome. It's a burgundy and cream colored uh, plaid and then just a solid burgundy royal ribbon. So I thought this would look really fun together and I'm thinking I might put these together. Let's see, or maybe not. That looks good too. Now we don't have to use, I'm thinking of using three ribbons in every zip tie and then the fourth ribbon as just the bow. What do you guys think? I'm thinking just using like this burgundy, let's see, doing these three in every zip tie and maybe this one as just the bow. Thinking, thinking, thinking. And normally we do two and two in every zip tie. Um, but we can put one aside for the bow. Let's let's try it. I think I'm going to put this one to the side, and we'll use these three for in in our zip ties. It's going to be a, a wreath that has a lot of ribbon in it, um, so that's why I picked more of a just a natural poly jute for the base. So I think that's what I'm going to do. You can do it any way you want. I am going to be cutting 16 pieces of this natural jute mesh. I'm just going to cut it with um, my rotary cutter and I'm going to use the whole roll and 16 into 360 is 22 and a half. So I'm going to make my pieces 22 inches. So I need 16 of these at 22 inches. So you could either, if you don't have a cutting mat, you can put your adhesive ruler that comes in your pack in your kit you can put that down on your table and roll out your mesh and cut it. So you put the end at the end of your ruler and there's the 22. You can take your scissors and just cut your mesh pieces okay, at 22 inches. If you don't have a uh, cutting mat, if you have a cutting mat, it's a little bit easier. All you have to do is roll it out, grab your rotary cutter, and cut it at 22 inches. So we're going to do, I'm just gonna do eight for right now. So we'll get the outside row done and then we'll cut more for the inside row. Just so we don't have lots of pieces of this mesh all over our table because if you watch me, you know it's gonna fall on the floor and it gets ugly and I get upset. <laughs> because I'm a messy crafter. Okay, so our ribbons. I decided we're gonna use, even though we have four ribbons, I'm gonna use this, just this for the bow. So we're, I'm gonna cut, we need a total of 16 of each. I hate how they bend the thing here. I, I always cut that off. Okay. 
again, we're kind of going for a farmhouse kind of style um, everyday wreath. However, I love burgundies and reds. I love the pop of color. Um, so it doesn't really have to be farmhouse. If you, if anybody likes burgundy or red, this is a perfect kit. All right, so we need, I'm gonna do eight. We'll start out with eight. So you're gonna pull your measure buddy to 14 inches, or if you don't have a measure buddy, you can use your cutting mat, or you can actually use your ruler. So you put the end of your ribbon on your adhesive ruler, and you can bend it at the 14 inch, okay? And we need eight of these, and you can just keep flipping it over, just like this. We'll do four like this. Or you can cut a piece of cardboard um, at 14 inches and wrap it around. However you do it, you need, we're gonna need a total of 16 pieces of each of these ribbons. So there is four. We're just gonna cut the end here two ends here and we're going to dovetail now I don't want to I just want a like a not a huge indent for my dovetail so I think I'm going to do half inch no one inch so I'm putting the end of my ribbon on my cutting mat or you can use your ruler putting my thumb at the one inch and I'm going to cut from the folded edge to the outside corner for my dovetail and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So if you use your ruler or your cutting mat, you can be sure to have your dovetails exactly the same for each ribbon. It just makes for a neater, um, a neater looking wreath. Okay, so there's our four. So I'm going to use my measure buddy for the rest. So we need another four. One, two, three, four. Fold it. Again, you're going to go from the cut the folded edge, my finger is on the one inch to the outside corner. Okay, so we got these ones. And we're gonna do the other two. I wouldn't go more than four rotations. These are all royal burlap ribbons, which is a really good ribbon. It's what I like to use the most. And um, it's pretty thick and it's got a very good wire. So if you wrap, if we wrapped eight, you can do it, but some of them will be a little bit longer. because you had to go around the thickness of the ribbon, if that makes sense. Okay, our ribbons are cut, at least eight of them for the first row. All right, and we're, I'm gonna make my little packets. So we're just gonna fold these in half. I'm going to have this one, this one, and then I think I'm going to have this one on the top. And of course, you can do your ribbons however you want. You can, if you don't want to do it this way, you can do it whatever way you want. You do have four rolls, full rolls of ribbon to work with. Okay, so we got one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are for our outside row. Open up your pack of zip ties. You get a hundred pack. 
and we're going to build this as we go. So we're going to use the ring board and you can see the sign is pretty big. So it's, it's going to look fabulous. Um, I'm going to start on the outside row. These are your hanging holes and you'll see a number one and two. I am going to start from hole one to the outside of the board. This is going to give us a larger appearance for our wreath. Okay, and there's a few ways you can do it. You, we can put our mesh on, zip tie it on, and then put our ribbon. So we'll do it like that first. So you're going to put your 22 inch piece curled down. So curl down. If you This would be curl up. So if you opened it up and it curled up, that's curled up. We're going to do it curl down right in front of us. Okay, and scrunch right down the middle. So what you're doing is dragging the mesh through the center and pleating it in the middle. And it'll make this really nice ruffle. And I'm gonna put it right on the board. Again, I like to, the outside one, we're gonna kind of fan it towards the outside. So put it on the board right on top of your zip tie. Do your zip tie up a little, make sure both sides are even. And then the last pleat towards the inside of the board, I kind of fold down towards the board and it automatically fans out our mesh. Okay, and then you do that zip tie up. All right, so you can do it like that. And then we'll go over top with the ribbons. So sometimes people think that's a little easier because, you know, you're, we got lots of zip ties. So you're going to now put another zip tie right over. We're going to open up our ribbon. And I think I might step these. So I'm going to do the two and a half inch and then the solid burgundy. So I have the bottom running right across in the middle of the two and a half inch. And then I'm gonna put the plaid with the bottom is running through the middle of the solid burgundy. And all the centers are lined up. Pinch it right up the middle and flip it upwards. And then you can just put it right on top. Now you can add some greenery or whatever else you want into your zip tie with the ribbon, but we're just gonna do just ribbon, whatever's in the kit. Okay, and then before I do it totally up, I like to make sure, I'm wondering if I should have did burgundy on the bottom. Maybe we'll alternate. Yeah, let's alternate. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one. Okay, we're gonna skip the next row and go to every other on the outside. Now, if you do have some clips, like little pipe, or not pipe, um, clothes pins or metal clips or whatever, you can clip your mesh, okay, put it right down on your board and then get your ribbons ready. Now this one I think I'm gonna do the solid, then the two and a half inch. So we got some burgundy against the natural. So I'm still stepping it, it's just I have the two and a half in the middle. Let's see what that looks like. And then you can put it right in the center and come around with the zip tie, with one zip tie all the way around. Oh, that looks good. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to keep with that. Oops. I'm going to keep with that. Um, pattern. 
Yes, I think I like that. Again, you can just come around with your zip tie. You don't have any clips. packet and then again this one will be the two and a half inch at the bottom and then the solid and then the plaid I kind of like doing it this way that way I don't have to go back and when you separate the ribbons you really don't have to um, come up with any pattern because it's already kind of the pattern of the ribbon tails are already kind of done for you. So it's curling. Weird. There we go. row one. Now we're going to work our way to row two. Doing the same thing, we're going to use the row in between um, where we used on row one. So like right here and then here, then here. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I do have to cut my mesh and ribbon though still. Two inches, another eight pieces, and another eight of each of the ribbon. All right, we got everything cut. So the inside row, we are going to do a kerfuffle. Okay, so we're gonna curl up this time where it curls up on it, and you can just put something heavy your scissors or whatever, and we're gonna fold approximately up to the center. And then I fold, bring the center down, and it just overlaps a little bit with the bottom. And you make kind of an envelope type formation here. And then we're just going to pinch it up the middle. And we make kind of this kind of bow tie, like that. And I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm going to put the center right on my zip tie and I'm going to come around. It just gives it a little neater appearance. We're going to again fold this down, the very last pleat, and pull tight and then we're going to put our ribbon over top. Just like that. Now you can change up your ribbon pattern if you want. Maybe we'll do the solid. So we'll do the two and a half, and then the one and a half plaid, and perhaps the solid. Let's see what that looks like. Just to make it a little bit different on the inside. Oh, that looks really pretty. There we go, nice and neat looking. And I'm gonna skip, go to the next one.
Again, curl up. Bring your bottom up to approximately halfway. You don't have to measure or anything, just guess. On the top. And then scrunch it down the middle. Okay, and then flip it over. Put it on the board. And then this set, what can I do with my ribbons? Oops. And I think I'll keep, we'll do the, the burgundy on the bottom again, then the two and a half, that way we see this really pretty diagonal. I'm going to keep my ribbon tails like that pattern. So we got a lot of ribbon in here, but it's, it's, it doesn't appear to be too much. It looks really pretty. our last piece. It's going to get squishy in here for the last piece. Fold over both sides of our ribbon here. And squish in this last piece. Nice and neat. And our ribbon tails are all looking good. I'll we'll have to fix our outer ones, but we have to put our sign in, so I'm not going to fix them yet. 
Now our sign. And your sign, you can have it going straight across if you want. Uh, we can even hang it. I think using the jute string will look really cute because it is kind of farmhouse style. Um, so I'm just going to flip this over and we're going to find our top. I'm going to put a zip tie in for our hang a hanger. So down and then you're just going to push it up to make your hanger. And then I think I'm going to, first we'll take these stickers off. I'm thinking I just maybe want to hang it instead of like putting the cable mount and everything in. What you could, we could put the cable mounts on the sides and put it right there. Or just kind of hang it from the center because it is like a farmhouse style. So that's really easy to do. So you just find your center. Okay, we're gonna get a zip tie. And I'm gonna hang it. Um, we're gonna do it in the center from hole one to one and a half. our string and I'm just going to put our string just like that and do the zip tie up. Now we won't want to do it up too too tight the zip tie. Super easy way to attach a sign. And I don't have it right to the board. You can if you want, but I want it to hang just a bit. So I'm going to do the zip tie right to the board. And then move our ribbons. I like to have a few coming over the sign. Kind of like that. put a bow. Remember we have that one more roll of this ribbon. It's just the natural red. I'm going to put a bow kind of right here. You could put one in the center if you want. I'm going to kind of, actually I think that's too high up. I'm just going to snip and move it down. So I'm still in the center. Just use hole one or hole two to the inside of the board. That'll have it a little bit lower. Yeah, that's a little better. Like I said, I'm going to put a bow kind of right here, just with only using this, this ribbon that we haven't used yet. I am going to use my bow maker. So we 
do have these in stock. We also have a um, the um, the deluxe Easy Bow Maker, the original one. Okay, so I'm going to do. I think a 14 inch tail should be enough. And I'm going to do like I always do and have the tails come out from the bottom because I'm going to do a few loops. Just like that. So I'm going to start with six inch. I'm going to go starting with the bad side facing up, come around, go down the center of the bow maker and give it a half twist towards you and your loop, the end of your loop will be on the six inch. Same thing on the other side. Half twist and towards you. So I'm going to do three loops at six inches. Now you can, we do have lots of ribbon left of the other colors. You can incorporate those ones in your bow as well, but I thought it would look really cool with just. Um, just this one for the bow, but we'll see at the end of how you like it because you can change it up. Okay, so there's three at six inch. One, two, three. One, two, three. And our two tails. And now I'm going to do two at five inches. Same ribbon, just smaller loops. So there's one. So there's that one's a little longer than five. Okay, and now I'm going to do one loop on each side at four inches. So it's Michelle's uh, six five four three two one recipe, just with this single ribbon though. And then the four inch single loop is going in between these ones. So it's going right in between the two here. And then I'm going to do a single loop in the center, which you just take your ribbon, go around your bow maker the last loop there and come down I'm just going to cut it off here take a zip tie and one of our Actually, this I probably can just use. I don't, probably don't need a zip tie. I'll just use the pipe cleaner. So you're going to go through the center here and come down around the bottom of your bow. Take it all off.
and give it a couple twists. And of course you can do any kind of bow you want. This is just a really easy, simple, simplistic bow with a great recipe. 654-321. So this is just gonna go right about right here. So I'm gonna go for the zip tie we went from hole two to the outside or the inside of the board and uh, for the bow I'm going to go right here but I'm going to go hole two with one side of my pipe cleaner one end of my pipe cleaner and then I'm going to go row one uh, hole one and a half with the other one and I'm kind of going through the mesh And I'll flip it over, you guys will be able to see. You can see through the mesh, you can see the hole. It's just getting the pipe cleaner to stop bending. There we go. Oops. My bow's upside down. Don't have it upside down more. There we go. <laughs> okay, so there's the center. I kind of just went over one. So it's all nice and neat. And then we'll open these up. So the bow kind of stands out from all the other ribbons bit of a focal point. I think it's gotta loosen it a bit. Too tight. I'm undoing the back just a little bit because I think I pulled my bow too tight. There we go. loops open. I'm going to dovetail the ends. we have our our bow is kind of front and center and then you're gonna go around and fix your outer tails 
because they're probably all messed up from flipping it up back and forth, back and forth. But there you go, that is our everyday, I guess that would be a farmhouse inspiration. I don't know, kind of looks farmhousey to me. I don't know about you guys. Um, we could actually put another kind of like another bow up top if we wanted, like a f kind of a funky bow with the same ribbons right here. Let's try it. We have lots of ribbon left. And I'm gonna put it kind of right kitty corner to here. So we'll do six inch tail, five inch loop. Just a simple one. do three loops at five inches okay and then I'm going to cut it off at six inches and I'm going to add a couple tails so just a piece at six six inches on each side Kind of like that. That looks good. Pull this up. So when you're making your bow with your pipe cleaner, grab your pipe cleaner and twist your bow. It's easier than trying to twist your pipe cleaner instead. Just grab your bow and twist. And then I'm going to just put this Dovetail these ends. And I'm going to go kind of kitty corner right here again just going to spread that and I'm going to go from hole two to one and a half there we go so it's pretty much diagonal to the bigger bow. So here's the bigger bow down here at the bottom. There's the center, I went one over. There's the top and I went one over. So you can see it's totally diagonal. Thanks, Dre. I hope you're feeling better. Alrighty. Oh, look how pretty that is. That turned out lovely, lovely, lovely.
open up your loops, curl your extra little tails there. Definitely, definitely farmhouse inspired. Perfect. And there we go. Isn't that, didn't that turn out pretty? I know, I love the colors too. We got reds and burgundies and natural. Got a mixture of different plaids. And then just having the bows a different color as well, it all works. There we go. Alrighty. Thank you all for joining me. And I can't wait to see what your guys' kits look like when you're finished. Now you can obviously you can do this with any kind of it doesn't need to be a kit. You can do this style um, on the ring board with any sign, any mesh, any ribbons that you like. But it's a really good, easy, neat, very neat looking styled wreath. 